So we need to introduce a mechanism to actually grab the current user for any controller in any view. Now there's a few different ways to do that, but mostly we're gonna to need to remove this code from our main controller and put it into our application controller. This is where all of our controllers inherit from, and so we want to be able to do that inside of here so that it's shared across all of them. Now we're going to be doing things a little bit differently than this as well. We're going to have a method called set current user and we will set current dot user um, instead of the instance variable. And we need to make that work by adding a model app models current dot rb and class current is going to inherit from active support current attributes. And this is going to have an attribute called user in it. And what this does is it's a class that you use in your requests that you can use to assign things like the user, maybe the time zone, what account they're on, those types of details that per pertain to the current request. So when someone opens your website, they may not be logged in, so current.user will be nil. But if someone's logged in and they open your website, current.user will be their user account. And someone else can be logged in and current.user for their request will be their user separate from the other current user for the other request. So it keeps everything separated and it allows you to define things that need to be shared throughout your application. So this is a really useful tool that Rails provides you. You don't have to use this, but it's definitely easy to use um, and recommended for a lot of different reasons that can be a little bit more advanced. So one of the tools that you can use in Rails is a before action. And what it says is before you run any actions, like those methods inside of our main controller, like index, or in our registrations, or sessions, any of these are called actions. Before any of those are run, we want to call set current user. So this will be the first thing that happens when you make a request in your Rails app. Before those methods get processed, this will happen and it will set the current user if it can find one. So this is really useful because it allows us to go into our views, like main index, and rather than checking if that instance variable is set, we can say current.user and always just reference that. And this can now be moved into our nav bar. So we can go into shared nav bar, and we have a link to home and about and we'll go and add something else that shows our current user um, state. So let's take our nav bar and split it up into two sections. The left side will be things in our app, and the right side will be things for our account. So log in, sign up, and log out will be on the right side. So the way we wanna do this is we wanna have another UL inside of our nav bar, and we'll have it class nav bar, nav bar nav, we'll have it MS auto, MB2, and MB large zero, those are bootstrap classes. And then we're gonna go through and say, if current.user will display the link to log out, and if there's not a current user, we'll display links to log in. So we'll have a button up here for log out, and we'll have a link to log in, um, and this will go to the sign up path. And we'll have one for sign up as well. And that should be sign in. Uh, we'll move this down and separate that. Now we'll also want one when you're logged in to link eventually to the current user's registration so you can edit their password. So let's go ahead and put that current user email in when you're logged out or when you're logged in will display your email address and we'll go through and update this to actually use some classes from bootstrap so we need to have li nav items around our nav items we'll close those li tags and we will go through and say um, nav link on each of these class nav link and we'll have nav link down here and we'll probably need something different for the button but we'll put nav link 
on that and our user doesn't have anything so we'll say span around the user. So it's just text for the email address. So now we can take a look at this. We'll see that our links are working correctly up here. We can log in as chris at gorails.com and we'll probably need to change the styling a little bit for these. So in Bootstrap, the navbar section, you'll find some examples of having, say, just text in your navbar. It's a span of class navbar text. So for now, let's go ahead and put that class on our email, and that will align it better up here. But now we're also going to need to do that button up here as well. So let's go and look at these buttons, and they have a... So I don't want to worry about this uh, design too much, but we'll just change the button to button outline secondary so it looks like a bootstrap button. And we'll go and fix the email address as a link in just a minute because we want to go and add a update password section for your account when you're logged in. So we'll go and do that next and fix this link as part of that.